I promised myself I wouldn't do videos like this. But here goes. For a while now I've been looking for um, a deck that would serve as my sort of benchmark Marseille. And only a couple of weeks ago in a live chat that Annika was doing on the channel Nobody Here, um, or somewhere like that, it was definitely when I was talking with Annika, um, I said that I thought the, the Rolls Royce of Marseille Type 2 tarots was the Pierre Madinier of 1709, um, as done by Yves Renault. Now the thing is there are two editions of Yves Renault's Madinier, 1709. The first edition is very lightly restored, the second one is not heavily but, but more thoroughly restored um, and in the second edition there are more corrections made to the stenciling of the original and of the first edition. Um, and yeah the second edition of the of the Madinier done by Yves Renault is gorgeous, it's beautiful. Um, but after I'd said that a couple of weeks ago I, I just happened to be looking around and I happened to see something else and I thought that's the one and here it is. Um, so I'm going to show you what the one is which I hope is going to become my my sort of benchmark Marseille in my own mind. Um, one or two remarks and just to look at ooh, a handful of the cards just to show why I think this is a stunning piece of work. There we are and that is it. And thanks go especially to the channel Jolly Old Tarot for doing a flick through, a walk through of this deck um, some time ago. I, I viewed that probably about a dozen times in the past two weeks thinking, oh, is that it? Is that going to be it? Is that going to be my my Marseille? And I think this is this is it. This is the one for me. Obviously, uh, Claude Baudel, 1751. Uh, this is another restoration and re-edition by Yves Renault. Um, I'm just going to very, very carefully cut through the plastic there and take that off. This is one of uh, Yves Renault's limited edition restorations obviously. Um, I don't know how many were in this edition. They're in these lovely boxes. Here we go. Wonderful. Um, oh that's interesting. I seem to have one of the German ones. Notes are in German and English. And this is number 1554 of the 3000 in this edition. Um, I must admit I was a little bit hesitant about this because um, of course Baudel uh, wasn't working in France, he was working in Switzerland. And I suppose it's possible that if there are some real Marseille purists out there they would say that this isn't a Marseille tarot. Um, for reasons that I'll show you, but Renault himself gives it the label Marseille. Um, Cheryl E. Smith, whose blog is fantastic and that I've been following for a long time now, puts it under the heading of Marseille, uh, although I think she uses the term regional Marseille or something like that just to distinguish it. Um, it's Marseille enough for me and more than enough. Here we go. As with so many of these decks by Renault, he 
delivers them in this wonderful paper, thick, lovely, almost parchmenty paper packaging. And here are the cards themselves. It is a very thick deck of very thick, beautiful cards. Let's actually get them on the screen. There we are. There's our man. I'm going to do a quick comparison with some cards from my Error edition of the Nicholas Convo. Um, some of you might know this edition. It's It's been around a long time. It's a, a photo reproduction of the 1760 Nicholas Convo um, published by Errant in sort of playing card size. Um, it's it's very widely obtainable still. I mean, I, I think I got mine off eBay, oh gosh, ages ago now. Um, and it's it's lovely, but let's compare. Because the great thing about the Bordel is that rather like the well, it it is on the pattern of uh, the Madinier. There are similarities between the majors of the Bordel and the majors of the Madinier that make them very much of the same family of Marseille tarots. And one of the distinguishing features is how beautiful the faces of the people are and how relatively cheerful they look. <laughs> compared to the rather miserable ones on the um, on the convo and also because there are some differences in uh, colouring but the real difference on the majors of the Bordel and on the, the pattern of the Madinier which it follows is little details of uh, the the wood cutting that show you that there's there is more there's more work gone into these um, in terms of sheer cutting bits of wood up than there has in the conver. The conver is is a much more simply carved set of wood blocks compared to the to the Bordel and the Madinier, um, and it shows in things like I mean here here this li tiny little detail here of the the Empress's uh, neckline there. There's decoration on there that there isn't in the Conver. Um, similarly, look at these, they are beautiful. The, the colours on these are not coming out on my camera. The colours are amazing, absolutely amazing, so rich. Uh, where are we? I've lost a couple. Here we are. One of the places you really notice the difference in the detail of the woodcutting is in places like L'Amoureux, the lover, where you see on the the conver here, the, the hem of his tunic here is very plain. And here on the Bordel and on the Madinier like it, it's it's decorated. Over and over again throughout the majors you get little details like that that tell you that th this is a more refined set of carvings um, that, that these decks are originated from. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's the word I'm going to use, more refined. You can see it, look here, in the on the same card, in the face of Cupid. Um, beautifully done in the Conva, very simply done. His eyes are little dots there. And he's got a very straight, uh, almost no nose at all there, just a little nub of a nose there. Here the face is much more uh, carved in much more detail. It's it's a lovely piece of work, it really is. And you get that throughout the majors in the Bordel. And look at that, look at the colours on Justice. Isn't she just beautiful?
It's a lovely piece of original work and it's a lovely restoration and re-edition by Renault. Really very gorgeous. This is absolutely turning out to be everything I hoped it would be. As with all Marseilles of that age, uh, sometimes the stenciling of the colour is a little bit sketchy, but we can forgive that. It was 250 odd years ago. 270 years ago. Gosh, doesn't time fly? Even here on the hangman, look, his belt is decorated in a way that it's not in the others. I'm going to flick through those very quickly because I want to get to... This is one of the signature cards of the Bordel and it is just so gorgeous. The Ace of Cups. Look at that. Now I've got a theory about this. My theory about this is that the Convert uh, in Catholic France looks like a communion chalice with a fancy lid on it. I've mentioned that in another video previously. Baudel was working in Switzerland which was Protestant and wouldn't have used that kind of Catholic chalice in communion. I don't think. I think by this time Protestant worship had gone in sufficient different directions that you wouldn't have had a Protestant communion cup looking like that. Um, and so I wonder if that's why Bordel has gone on a radically different design for this Ace of Cups. Just wondered. The detail in the miners is just phenomenal. Um, the, uh, the decoration, the foliage and, and, and all of that on all of the cards where it's present is much more detailed, much more elaborate uh, than in the Conva. The carving of the cups themselves is again much more detailed and elaborate on every single card. That's wonderful. Um, let's just go through them. Uh, that's not what I was expecting next. Hang on. Yeah, look at this. Look, here in the sword as well. This is another defining feature of the uh, of the bordel in particular. You get handles on the swords that go and then a blade on the other end, um, which you don't in I think any other Tara de Marseille type two. I, I don't I've I've never seen it on illustrations of another deck at all where you get an actual um, hilt on the sword like that. It's lovely. Beautifully done. Um, what else was I going to home in on next? Oh yes. The coins. <laughs> there is one card in particular which is just outrageous in terms of decoration and it's the four of coins um, obviously uh, we're used in Tarot de Marseille type 2 to having this um, shield in the middle of the coins four of coins and here on the Conva it's um, it's got the three fleur-de-lis I forget which particular French coat of arms that is but that's common on all, all of the Conva decks there <laughs> over the border in Switzerland you just get this outrageous piece of Baroque ornamentation complete with trumpets. That is just fabulous. I think they're trumpets. I really think they're trumpets. Um, like you sometimes see on, on Baroque organ cases. Um, and complete with drapery and all that. That is just stunning. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And this odd little crown here that I must take some time in trying to identify in the um, single-headed eagle coat of arms. Or is it nah, Is that an eagle or is it a phoenix? That might be a phoenix. Look, it's standing on um, what could be the preparations for a bonfire there. And these could be flames around it. I'll look that up and see, see what that might be. Um... And just one last card that I think is is 
worthy of note from the decoration point of view is again the ace of batons and just the sheer the, now look is dispensed with the flames raindrops whatever they are um, Hebrew letter Yod whatever they are um, on every other Terra de Marse type 2 and he has gone for decoration of flowers with leaves and the, even the detail of the stenciling on these even if the stenciling isn't always pinpoint accurate you know you've got several different colours tiny little bits of stenciling going on really gorgeous and down here is, are these vine leaves with, with grapes emphasising you know the, the idea of, um, of of growth of this you know al alone among the suits the, the batons are, are things that are alive they're growing things and this really emphasises that I said that you know this for some purists this might not be quite Marseille enough and that comes out in things like the decoration of the baton suits you know these are not your um, strict Marseille batons they've got these lovely decorations at the end of each stave um, some of them have got decoration in the middle of the stave but they're beautifully done like I say it's more than Marseille enough for me um, I think on first impressions I was right um, I was saying just the other evening you know um, I'm not a collector in the way that some people are collectors I, I don't go for the latest first edition I don't go for indie decks or anything like that what I'm building and in a very small collection is what I would call a study collection for um, various different types in and, and sort of points in time for, for the history of tarot to, to study the history to study the semiotics the symbology all of that um, and this is very much it's going to feel very at home as part of my study collection um, I think I've done the right thing in going for this one above all this is just so lovely um, so thanks again to everybody who I've had conversations with um, about in the past few weeks especially when I've been sort of homing in on a sort of benchmark Marseille um, uh, another shout out again to Jolly Old Tarot he has done some wonderful walkthroughs of some stunningly beautiful card decks um, and there we are gosh thanks for watching <laughs>